What's going on guys? Welcome back into the channel. In today's video, we're going to be remaking a very crucial video that I made back during Madden 20, and that is the importance of salary management and planning in Madden franchise mode. Now, one of the main things that I want to talk about in today's video is understanding your future salary cap situation, how to understand your future salary cap situation, and some ways to avoid getting into a bad situation with your future salary cap. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about salary cap management and planning, so future planning. And one of the first tips that I want to give you guys is to always have access to and visit your salary table on a very often basis. Specifically in Madden 22 here, all you have to do in order to access your salary tab is you go to manage rosters and then team salaries. It's a little bit different for prior Maddens, but it's actually easier to get to and find in my opinion in prior Maddens. You just have to find your salary table and that'll bring up a table that looks like this. Now there are a couple of major ways here in which you can determine which players are available for contract negotiations in future years. It's specifically we're talking about within a year, two years, three years, things like that that are going to impact your salary cap situation in the near future. You can do this by going to the years remaining column here on the salary table and then press square to sort that. Either way, what you're going to do is you're going to sort. It's going to either bring up the most years remaining or the least years remaining. You want to go to either whichever information you're trying to seek to determine whether these players are going to be around for a long time or a short time. Specifically right now, I'm looking at who's going to be re-sign eligible within this season. So on this table specifically, we have a handful of players that have one year remaining on their contract, and that means that they're going to be up for negotiation, and I'm going to need the salary cap in order to bring those players back. In addition to that, the second way that you can do this in a, a way that I like to do it very often is you can go through their salary cap hit for a specific season. So if you want to find out which players are not under contract for 2022, say we're in 2021 right now, you can go ahead and sort by the salary cap hit for that season. You can find out who's making the most money in that season, and you can find out who's not making any money in that season. So being that I have players making $0 in that season, that tells me that those players are going to need negotiated ahead of time. In addition, we can take a look at 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025. Like we can go all the way out into the future and determine when players are specifically going to be negotiating contracts. These tolls are going to be extremely important for planning your salary cap space into your future years in your franchises. Now, the reason that that is super important is because if we take a look at some of the higher earning players on my team, you can see, for example, with Trey Hendrickson, he is going to increase the amount of money that he's making every single year. That's the way that contracts work in Madden right now as of the time of making this video. In the future, hopefully they will be able to offer us different contract structures, but as of recording this video for the past however many Maddens, it is always going to be a backloaded contract, which means your salary is going to go up year by year. The implication of that is right now it might say I have $71.6 million in cap space, but in the future year, that is the money I'm using to re-sign a player. However, up at the top of the screen, you will see that it does not give you a 2022 salary cap number. It's only giving you the number for the current year. So right now, I'm only seeing my 2021 salary cap numbers, and in the future, I'm seeing what these players are going to be making, but up at the top of the screen, we are not getting a number for what my salary cap is in the future year. But it stands to reason that if most of your players are on backloaded contracts, and all of these players' numbers are going up by $1 million, $2 million per year, for example, for players that aren't even at the top of my team, then my salary cap space is going to be significantly lower in the next season in order to reset these players that are up for negotiation. That is absolutely crucial in game planning for how you're going to re-sign these players in the future. Likewise, those contracts continue to go up through the life of the contract. So right now, Joe Mixon is making $10.7 million, but by 2024, he'll be making 12.3. A better example is Trey Hendrickson, who is right now is making $12.5 million, but in 2024, will be making $17.5 million. That's a massive difference. 
payments, and that is $5 million taken away from my ability to pay players in the future. Now I wanted to go ahead and scroll over to another team to give you guys a very good example of how this can negatively impact your team. If you're any team that's up against the salary cap, you don't have a lot of cap space, then you are in probably a tough position to be able to re-sign players and that is where some trouble can come in for your team for example certain teams like the Chiefs here for example have a lot of players to re-sign now you might not immediately think that this is a massive issue because none of these players are that good however you do want to field a full roster and in order to be able to field a full roster right now I have 6.6 .6 million dollars worth of money to play with and that is not considering the fact that uh, some of these these contracts are going to be disappearing, which is helpful to me. That means that I'll be getting money back for these contracts, but that's also not considering the fact that the salary cap is going to, or the salary amount is going to increase significantly for my other players. So for example, Patrick Mahomes' contract is going to go up from a $7.4 million value to a $36 million value. I'm losing essentially $30 million in space to be able to negotiate contracts with other players. So you have to be very careful with the way that you negotiate your contracts and the way you sign free agents. One of the specific examples that I want to give is if you have a young team like my Bengals team, for example, and you see, okay, well, I have $71 million in cap space. A lot of users are going to be tempted to go out into free agency and sign as many great players as they can to long-term contracts, not realizing that some of their top players, some of the best players on their team are soon going to be up for negotiation for a contract and when that time comes if you have already spent all of your cap space by signing big name free agents and things of that nature those players will not be coming back to your team Joe Burrow is a perfect example right here Say, for example, I went out into free agency and signed guys like Devontae Adams to $20 million contracts, signed a bunch of guys to four, five, six $6 million contracts, and I was not aware of the fact that in three seasons, I'm going to have to negotiate a contract with my star quarterback that his contract value is probably going to go up from around $11 million to $30 or $40 million, and I don't save salary cap space for that. I could potentially lose this quarterback to free agency or be forced to trade him away because I'm not going to have the money to pay this player. Now we've talked about the ways that you can get into trouble here with your salary cap. We've talked about the reason behind that with salaries going up year over year and, and maybe signing too many free agents to long-term contracts that conflict with your ability to re-sign the players that are already on your team. Um, the real thing that we need to talk about though is how to avoid these things how do we avoid getting into these places where we have too many players to re-sign good players to re-sign and we don't have the salary cap to be able to do it because we either overspent in previous years or we committed to too many of these uh, young players or high overall players uh, to long-term deals. We overcommitted to them. So how do we avoid that? Well, there are a couple of different strategies in order to avoid this. So first and foremost would be to reserve your money for the players that you want to re-sign. So I know, for example, that I'm eventually going to want to sign Joe Burrow. I know that I'm probably going to want to bring back Tyler Boyd. I know I'm going to want to bring back my superstar left tackle, Jonah Williams. And I know that those are to three top three players that might make somewhere in the range of 15 million dollars 20 million dollars and and if we're considering joe burrow 30 million dollars so i could take what i expect them to be making in the future and and you know decide how much money i need to keep set aside for those players so you know joe, joe burrow i'm gonna need 30 million dollars a year i'm gonna need 20 million extra on top of what he has or 30 million extra on top of what he has that's already half of my available cap space right now for tyler boyd his contract will probably double so i need to save an additional 10 mil for him. I probably need to save an additional 10 to 15 million for Jonah Williams, depending on how the contract is, is structured for him. So, you know, I'm looking at an additional 50 to 60 million dollars just to re-sign three or four of my top players. And that is being cautious, but that means that I have probably 10 to 15 million dollars worth of cap space to work with for long-term players in free agency this offseason. Now, the other strategy that you can implement along 
along with that is signing players to short-term contracts in free agency or signing other players on your team to short-term contracts. And that can work in various different ways. So for example, I could bring back Ricardo Allen on a one-year or two-year contract, and then his contract will expire at the same time as those guys that I'm looking to re-sign or before those guys are looking to re-sign, and I will make sure that I have some money available because that player won't uh, be coming back to my team potentially at that point. He'll only serve a role for one or two seasons, and then I have that money to spend on the players at the time of needing to re-sign them. However, there are other strategies to work around these things. So the other strategy that I like to employ with my players is I like to stagger the years of their contracts and the years of their negotiations. You guys will see that very oftentimes teams will have a ton of players to re-sign in a single season. So if we go over to maybe the Saints, for example, they're negative on cap space right now. And if we take a look at players that need to be re-signed right now, then we're looking at players uh, that are very vital to that team. We're looking at a 94 overall left tackle, an 88 overall corner, 81 D tackle, and 84 overall center. These guys all need to be re-signed in the same season, and these guys are crucial to the team. You want to avoid having all of these players to re-sign in the same season, and you can do that in multiple ways. You can do this by planning out your draft picks, but let's say you really have a tough cap situation on your team, I would say try to space out who you draft at the top of the draft, or maybe you see that that's coming up in your future for your team, so you trade away your first round draft pick for future draft picks in order to delay a high overall player potentially taking up a massive amount of salary on your team. So what I try to do is I try to stagger these things. Let's say we take a look at some of these high overall players, and I know that I'm going to be strapped for cash for multiple seasons. Let's say I free up enough money to re-sign some of these. These guys, well, maybe I signed to uh, Teron Armstead to a one-year deal or a two-year deal so that he's out through 2023, and then maybe I sign Marshawn Lattimore through a three- or four-year deal, and he'll be out through 2024 or 2025, and I can get my salary situation to a point where I don't have to negotiate everybody at once. I only have to find enough cap to negotiate one or two important players per year. That is an extremely important situation. Uh, skill that you can develop whenever you are trying to build your rosters in Madden franchise mode because it makes it much easier to manage your salary situation and it allows you to adjust to your situation every single year. When you have this number of high overall and high importance players up for negotiation, you run into the problem of not really having a lot of solutions to that problem. There's only so much you can do and only so much salary cap you can free up in each year without completely obliterating your roster. However, if you only have one or two players up for negotiation per year, maybe three, maybe four important players up for negotiation per year, then you can move around salary cap in order to better manage that. It's hard to find the amount of salary cap to sign Teron Armstead, Marshawn Lattimore, uh, Sheldon Richardson, and Eric McCoy all in the same season. It's going to be very difficult to find that amount of salary cap in order to make those things work. So staggering the years of your players' contracts, I know everybody wants to sign them to long-term deals, all that type of stuff. I get it, but staggering how many years you sign those players to can be extremely advantageous to you because it allows you flexibility in the long term. And then finally, I want to talk about how do you get out of a bad situation? Well, you can trade these players away, and that is the main way that you can free up cap space and help your cap situation if your team is in a bad situation, if they're looking at a future bad situation, or if you are, you know, getting into a bad situation. So regardless of what the situation is, if you need to free up salary cap situation, you can do that by trading these players away. And remember to always consider their penalty versus what their actual salary cap hit is. With all of these players that are up for re-signing for the Saints, for example, 
if I deem it to be difficult or impossible to bring all of these guys back, then what I can do is trade some of these guys away that are going to give me more salary cap flexibility. You have to be diligent in figuring out which players are worth trading away, which players are worth negotiating and hanging on to. But regardless, the whole point of this video is to drive your attention towards paying attention to these salary cap numbers and future salary cap numbers because the main problem that I see oftentimes is people signing too many free agents to long-term deals, which conflicts with your ability to bring back the players that are already on your team and conflicts with your ability to re-sign the players that you really want to have around. You have to really kind of think about, you know, do I really need that extra free agent and is that going to cause problems for me bringing back, like I said, Joe Burrow, for example, in the future. If I went out and signed all of these players with my $70 million in cap space, I might create a problem for myself in the future with bringing back that star quarterback who is going to need a contract that is going to be significantly larger than it is right now in two or three seasons. Very important stuff to consider. Hopefully you guys found some of the information in this video useful or some of the tips and tricks that I gave you in order to try to manage these things. Obviously, we can't get into a, a huge amount of detail, but I did want to give you guys as much information as possible. If you did find this video useful or this information useful, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one, and I hope you have a good one.